Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Father Kadan, Paley Glendale, and Dr. X17. Coming up on DTNS, USB makes things complicated. How you could become a VTuber at little or no cost, and text to image writing is a skill. We can make money out of that. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, September 2nd, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And out of the suburbs of Atlanta, this is Terrence Gaines. Drawing the top tech stories from Cleveland, I'm Len Peralta. Oh, I see what you did there. I have no puns, but I'm the show's producer, <laughs> Roger Chang. Uh, it's good to have everyone assembled on a Friday, uh, taking us into the long holiday weekend here in the United States. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Meta partnered with Qualcomm to produce custom chipsets for its Quest virtual reality headsets based on Qualcomm's Snapdragon platforms. While these custom chips will be optimized for Quest system specifications, Meta will not have an exclusive on them. Microsoft began testing its new Xbox Game Pass friends and family plan. So if you're a customer in Ireland or Colombia, you might be able to get this. Subscribers can share Game Pass Ultimate benefits with up to four other users for €21.99 a month or the equivalent in Colombia. No word when it will roll out to other markets. Google announced it will let users choose alternative payment systems for Google Store in-app purchases in India. Australia, Indonesia, Japan, and the European Economic Area. <laughs> That's hmm. a new one. Google says non-gaming developers globally can apply to qualify for this program. Yeah, the EEC predates the EU and includes a, a few countries that aren't officially members of the EU. So it's actually a little wider area than, than <laughs> if you just did it in the EU. Uh, the CEO of crypto exchange Binance, Changing Zhao, or CZ as he goes by, uh, posted on the company's blog that Binance was never incorporated in China. There's been a lot of scuttlebutt uh, about Binance recently. You may have seen it here and there. Uh, crypto exchanges were actually banned in China a few months after Binance launched. He says most employees left the country by late 2018 and it has no official home base, though its official headquarters is Hong Kong, which is part of China. Variety sources say that Netflix plans to launch its ad-supported tier on November 1st. That's ahead of its previously announced target of early 2023. The company wants to launch the plan ahead of the ad-supported Disney Plus basic plan. That's set to launch on December 8th. Netflix reportedly informed ad partners it expects to have 500,000 customers on the new tier by the end of this year. Yeah, right after Netflix said there's no, these all these reports of us launching early are wrong, Variety comes out like, yeah, but seriously, you're launching but November you are. first. <laughs> all right, let's talk a little more about uh, a new version of USB that gives me a headache. Uh, once, uh, if you listen to the Know a Little More about USB 4, uh, you'll hear me even say that the USB Implementers Forum, or USBIF, had indicated there will be no more point versions of USB, uh, that the successor to USB 4 would simply be USB 5. However, on September 1st, the USBIF announced USB 4 version 2.0. So technically not a point upgrade. It's not USB 4.2. It's USB 4 version 2.0. Sigh. Yeah, okay. So so naming aside, let's break this down a little bit. USB 4 maxes out at 40 gigabits per second. USB 4 version 2.0 is an update to the USB spec that enables 80 gigabits per second data performance over existing 40 gigabit per second USB-C passive cables and newly defined 80 gigabit per second USB-C active cables. Stay with us here. There are a couple other updates to the spec as well. USB 3.2 data tunneling can go faster than 20 gigabit per second, and the spec is now aligned with the latest versions of DisplayPort and PCIe. USB 4 version 2.0 will be published by November with technical uh, detailed technical training for developers coming at USB Developer Days, which happens in Seattle on November 1st and 2nd, and in Seoul, Korea, November 15th through 16th. So you may not see this in products until next year. In fact, you probably won't. Branding and marketing guidelines will eventually be updated to include a USB 80 gigabit per second designation for certified cables and products. Now, this is all backwards compatible. So let's be honest, most of the folks who don't listen to this show aren't even going to notice. Their, their stuff's just going to work. But the whole thing 
can be simpler than it sounds, depending on how you look at it. The simple take is that USB 4 2.0 goes faster over some existing cables. You won't even need a new cable. Uh, you would just have to have a USB 4 version 2.0 port. So if you need 80 gigabits per second, you might be able to use your existing cable, or you can go buy a new active cable that can do it too. It gets complicated though when you try to identify the port. A vendor can call it USB 4 version 2.0, but they don't have to to meet the spec. They can also label the port as super speed 80 gigabits per second or just 80 gigabits per second. However, you get it. If you get it, it will be good for your storage devices, your hubs, your docks, and your displays. Oh, so well, there's that's a point. Clear. There's a point to the upgrade. Well, I think it is. I think it is clear. It's like, look, if you need 80 gigabits per second to have more storage, uh, more to you know, better docks and displays, you can get it. What's not clear, like you're saying, Sarah, is okay. But how do I make sure that I have it? That's where it starts to get a little muddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all nutty. <laughs> you may have heard the term VTuber used lately. It stands for virtual YouTuber and is usually applied to someone who's doing videos where a digital avatar represents them. It's still in its early phases and seems similar to where podcasting was in, say, around 2007. Getting popular, cheap to do it, but takes some DIY perseverance. Jenny Zhang at Wired has an excellent article talking about all the different kinds of VTubers and what you need to do it. There are lots of ways, some involving AI and 3D modeling, but if you're starting out, you can do it uh, using the basics at almost no cost. It's worth a read if you're really interested, but here's a short version of what Zing found out when talking to VTubers like Kyle Overdrive, Jams, and Fofamit, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you can use some free software called Vroid uh, to create a 3D model. That's so you, a terrible name. Sorry. Uh, you don't have to spend, well, it depends on, on what you're thinking of when you say it, I guess. Right, I'm, right. I'm uh, thinking of the nasty stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's like Vroid, like droid. If you, that, That's what it's, you're, yeah, you're supposed to think of. Right. Anyway... Without picking on the name, it's free, okay? So you don't have to pay for it. You get your 3D <laughs> model. Uh, you can also use a marketplace called booth.pm if you want to get some character outfits uh, or even buy an off-the-shelf model if you don't want to use Vroid uh, for around 50 bucks. Custom models run you into the $100. So off-the-shelf, it might be something that somebody else is using if you want to get it customized for yourself. It's 100 bucks. But if you buy an off-the-shelf model, you can customize it yourself using open-source Blender software, which is also free. Uh, uh, to be able to run the model for a live stream, you're going to need a computer powerful enough to play your typical current AAA video game title. Uh, Kyrie uses a machine with an NVIDIA GeForce GTS 1070, uh, Intel Core i7, and 16 gigs of RAM. So the cheapest computers might not be able to do this, but you don't need the latest, highest grade model. Uh, you'll need a, a camera, of course. Mo most of the folks out there are using your typical Logitech C920 or something similar. Uh, you'll also need software that tracks your face and then maps your movements onto the virtual character model that you got. Uh, the people Zheng talked to all use something called VC face that's not like a venture capitalist it's v-s-e-e -E, like you see a virtual face vc face uh that's free you don't have to pay anything for that either uh you also need a mic uh better mic than, than probably you got built in your laptop uh you'll want some lighting ring light something like that and like any online content creator you're gonna need the content that's probably the hardest part you're gonna need to enjoy doing it so terrence I, I know you've got kids uh and uh this is very popular with people coming up yeah um so i have kids like uh, tom mentioned specifically i have a 12 year old that is getting into youtube she's putting up content all the time uh but she has kind of went back and forth well <laughs> let me re let me rephrase i have went back and forth with allowing her to use her face on youtube because parent right mm -hmm. yeah but this may be an alternative and in addition to have some a little privacy and just you know wait for her to get old enough to actually develop an online presence um it may be a barrier of entry so if she's really into it going through these steps of creating a uh, virtual avatar for youtube kind of can be a, a barometer to see how interested she is into it so if i present her with this hey you know, you can be a, v, uh, um, a, a VTuber and you can use your face without actually using your face, 
but you have to go through step A to step B to step C to step D. You got to use this software. You got to set it up. If she goes through it and she actually, uh, I guess, completes all the tasks necessary to become a VTuber, then to me that says, okay, you're actually into it. You actually mm -hmm. want to do it. You know, you're willing to go through the the rigmarole, the red tape to actually do this. So that kind of be a barometer of a level of interest because you know how kids are these days. They'll be in one thing one minute and then mm -hmm. five minutes later it's on to something else. Well, yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, the idea of a 12-year-old saying, well, uh, okay, I guess I understand that my dad is uncomfortable with me having, you know, my actual face and personality too much on YouTube the you know the 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 vtuber model might actually be kind of great in that way like play around and but it's still it's sort of like i don't know having some sort of a locked instagram account but still some access mm -hmm. type thing yeah and this is just getting more and more popular uh i i i think uh, what fascinates me the most about this story is it reminds me of where podcasting was in, I don't know, about 2007, you know, when Apple had started to list podcasts on iTunes. So people were starting to hear about it, but not everybody had heard about it. And if you wanted to do a podcast or even get a podcast before iTunes, uh, you had to work at it. You had to, you, anybody could do it. You could do it for free. You, just, you could still do it for free. Yeah. Uh, but, but you had to, to know what you were doing. You had to get the tools. You had to manually create RSS feeds. And, and then you know. had to explain to people how they listen. Yeah, yeah. And but again, what, and so, so VTuber doesn't have that explain how side because you just put it up on Twitch or YouTube or, or whatever. Uh, but it does have that, that sort of, hey, everything's free. Anybody can get into it. You just got to put in the work. Uh, and, to your, work. and to your right. point, Terrence, uh, if your daughter or anybody else puts in the work, they're getting some skills in Blender, you know, in 3D animation and design that could be transferable to something else if they get mm -hmm. bored with doing this. Yep, lighting, audio, if you're doing transitions, if you're mixing in images and graphics, you know, that all to me that kind of says I'm, my kids are at the age of like, all right, are you going to do this or are you not? So going through those steps to me is like, okay, you're interested. Yeah, it kind of it, it it the the this is very fascinating to me. Uh, even though I've I've never uh, personally experimented with any VTuber thing, there are many situations where I'm like, you know, I got something to say, but I don't really want it to be me. You know, maybe it could be mm -hmm. you know an avatar that's sort of representative of me, which kind of makes me think of what you know many companies go, going for the metaverse. Are, are thinking of and hoping that people glom on to. It's not for everybody, but there is there is something to be said about saying, this is, this is the image that you will see of me, whether you know me or not. Maybe you know me, maybe you've never met me, but it's something that can be of, I don't know, maybe comfort for the content creator or the audience, and there's there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I, I think that's the big attraction to it is I want to create content, but I don't want to deal with people judging me uh, on who I am. Uh, so I'm going to yeah. create an avatar. And if they don't like the avatar, fine. Uh, but it's because that's not me, me. Uh, and, and I think and it, it can be know, changed. Yeah, and it can be adapted. But but even if it's not, it's like there's a level of protection between you. I hadn't even thought about the metaverse connection. I, I, I immediately like sped ahead 10 years in my mind and thought, is, are we going to look at VTubers and think, oh, they were the earliest forms of metaverse stars before it all blew up? Or are we going to look at this and go like, <laughs> they called them VTuber. What a weird thing to call them. Like, you know, or is it, is this just going to be something that was like, yeah, I guess that's kind of like what we have now, but it won't be, won't really be connected. Yeah, it definitely could see like a gateway drug yeah. <laughs> to get into the metaverse. Because now before we're like metaverse, oh, that's stupid. VTubers though, Ah, okay. I, I can see it now. Yeah. I mean, if I, when in uh, iOS, it's like I've created my avatar that like roughly looks like me, you know, I only have so many choices. I didn't think about it that hard. If that avatar was representing mm -hmm. stuff that I was saying um, of, you know, any consequence, then it would matter more. And to have more tools to make that more lifelike and maybe like me but in all the ways that i can decide that's i think that's where we're going here you could actually watch your videos back with less anxiety 
Oh, gosh. I mean, <laughs> here's you're just, hoping. You're just, it, this is very good for people. Tinvec mentioned this in, in our chat. It, this is very good for folks with social anxiety because, again, it gives you that barrier. Uh, it gives you that, that distance to, to have a little feel, a little safety uh, in doing this. I, I don't know. There may be a future for us, Sarah. This, this may be, you know, we may be oh, thank DTNS hosted by VTubers. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out, world. You know, yeah. Catch us next week. I know Roger, uh, he, we probably talk about this in the post show, in the extended show. Roger had a lot of thoughts about uh, companies taking advantage of this to create uh, a star that they can replace the person behind it. Uh, so there's, there's probably something uh, on the corporate side coming for this as well. Uh, if you have a thought like that or anything on the show, but you don't know our email address, here it is. Email us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Earlier this week, when we talked about the person who won a prize at the Colorado State Fair using the text-to-image generator MidJourney, we mentioned in the discussion that crafting the prompts to make images show up on MidJourney or Dolly uh, in a way that's useful, in a way that looks good, is a skill. Well, The Verge's A.D. Robertson has an article today called Professional AI Whisperers Have Launched a Marketplace for Dolly Prompts. So not only is it a skill, but it's one people are making some money from if they're good at it. Yeah. So the major player in this space is prompt based, letting folks buy and sell prompts for Dolly, GPT-3, Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion. Uh, there are others, but those are the big ones. The promise is that it, uh, the prompts that you buy, so you pay for them, will then supposedly reliably produce a certain art style or subject on the attended platform. It's kind of like just a very deep search, I guess, that maybe some people are better at than you are. Good prompts includes keywords for the intended aesthetic, important elements for a scene, brackets for variables that the buyer can plug in themselves. So you have some, you know, some options even after you buy a prompt. But prompts sell for three to five bucks, going, that's the going rate. Prompt Base keeps 20% of that, so that's how they make their money. The writer of the text re uh, retains whatever rights come from within writing a prompt for these things, something that's entirely untested in the legal world. So <laughs> lots of questions there. Good luck with that one, right? But for example, a prompt might say a cute uh, sloth. And having said that, I don't know if sloths are cute. Well, they, they, you, they would leave pet type in brackets, right? So oh, that you could put whatever you wanted. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay, well, that makes sense. Well, I wouldn't say sloth, so. <laughs> you could say a cute insert Brontosaurus. pet here. Brontosaurus. Oh, Brontosaurus, there you go. Yeah. Cute insert pet here in a tree with leaves all around it and berries growing on the branches. That's probably not a prompt worth selling, but it contains <laughs> the kind of elements you're looking for person who can sell these is good at knowing how to weight words, what words to choose, and how to phrase things. So maybe the brontosaurus may be the most important thing with the leaves <laughs> kind of ancillary, right? They create something that will reliably produce good results. Remember, these systems don't produce the same results, even if you put them in the same same prompt. Yeah, well, the AI which is sort of That's sort of different. the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so creating, creating that text that even if it's not going to get the same thing every time, every time you get something good, that's the skill. Uh, Robertson interviewed designer Justin Reckling about what he thinks makes him a good prompt writer. He's been selling these to some success. Uh, he says it's basically because he is an artist and a coder and engineer. So he understands how the system will interpret what he writes, and he has an idea about what's good aesthetics. Uh, he says he spends about 10 to $15 in credits on Dolly, to create a prompt because he's trying things, you know, to see what works. Uh, and he needs to sell about five to 10 of those in order to break even. Usually it takes a couple of months for a prompt to sell two to three times. So this is not an immediate return. His most popular prompt is a Dolly prompt called Block Cities that will create isometric cityscapes if you're doing world building or making a video game or something mm. like that. Uh, and he sells it for $2.99. Reckling also created a GPT-3 model at typestitch.com that was trained on good prompts to take keywords from you and then generate good prompts. Uh, he says he uses it to get ideas. He's never actually tried to sell a prompt 
generated by it because there's it's still not good enough uh but it's what we use to create the tree leaves all around it with berries growing on the branches that came from from typestitch.com so i i feel like this is fascinating because while it's probably not a lucrative business model and it may never become one it, it seems like he can barely break even it does show that there's a skill to this and that and and in that debate over whether creating these involves you in any way as a creator, right? Should you have any investment in the art that's put out by these? I think that's important to take into account is that not, not everybody can just put in text and come up and get the tool to spit out something that looks good. And the investment thing was something I was going to speak out on because there was some stories. Wasn't there some stories where uh, some AI, you was able to input text and then it would create art for you but people were, of course, human nature. We were using it for all the wrong things because they didn't have any sort of investment in it. Now, if you can put uh, speak words or put text into something and create art that you can profit off of, mm -hmm. maybe people may take it a little bit more serious versus just goofing around with it on social media. Well, yeah. and that's exactly that. That's that's what some people are doing. Uh, I don't have Dolly to access yet, so Dolly two people out there help a sister out, but. Um, I, I have a friend who's actually really good at it. And when he creates art, you can see what what the prompt was. And it's very uh, it's it, it, it goes pretty deep. You know, it's like two kids hanging out by the pond. But one of the kids is sort of angry at his mother and the other kid is wearing a green shirt. And, you know, you can you can actually the the more detailed you are in the prompt the more, well, not the better that the image is going to be, but the the more specific the The image. more control you have over what it puts out. Maybe, right? yeah. yeah. And that is, I, I really liken it to me saying, okay, Terrence, you and I, let's let's both search for something pretty specific and let's see what, what, who has the more eloquent search term, you know, like right, a little competition, prowess. Right? <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of like copy editing. Not everybody has the same skills. Nope, because if everybody was blogging, it would be uh, wouldn't be a dead art. Well, everybody no, used to blog. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, we saw that. If was. everybody could blog, it would. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You still be doing it, making money. <laughs> Tin, Tinvec, uh, Tinvec's on fire in the chat today. He he asked the question. I think a lot of folks have, which is okay. But he's selling that Block City thing for two ninety nine. Can I just type in Block City to Dolly? and get it myself? And the answer is no, because he's not selling the word Block City. He's selling a prompt- His version. That I, I put Block City into type stitch, and it, it suggested a city that is completely enclosed in a block of quartz with only one small opening at the top for light. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's the best example, but it's something along that line of complexity that will consistently produce the result that you see in his listing. So, so it's, yeah, sure, you say anybody can do it, but not anybody can do it, right? It, it takes a special crafting. It's, it's almost a kind of poetry or like crafting a search term if you want to be less, less dramatic about it. But yeah, it's, it's, it is a skill. Whether it's a worthwhile skill or not, right now it's like, eh, break even. You know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It could be. It could be. It helps to be on the ground floor. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Speak, speaking of search terms... Uh, you may be a parent who has a child, maybe they're a younger child, and that child might say, like, like saying things like, you're a poopy, stupid butt, because that's a kid. If so, <laughs> and you say, yep, that's me, Joey Helpish gets it, since Amazon's assistant frequently plays his ukulele hit, Poopy Stupid Butt, uh, if you were to ask nicely. If a child asks, Helpish says he asks kids from his school, give me five syllables to start. And the four-year-old girl screamed, poopy stupid butt. And then the next 10 minutes were me writing down everything that the kids were yelling at me that poopy stupid butt was doing. So Helpish, he gets kids. He also added the song to Amazon Music. And the, here's where it gets interesting because it netted him a few hundred dollars at first because enough kids just say things like that and his song would play. Then the pandemic hit 
and the streams on Amazon for Poopy Stupid Butt went through the roof. It's now been streamed about 10 million times on Amazon Music and has generated about $10,000 in total income for Helpish. Not bad. Well, yeah, yeah, right. You know, you know, for 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 a whim. But Helpish isn't alone here. Uh, in fact, songwriter Matt Farley has recorded more than 23,000 songs <laughs> with some creative names. But his biggest hit is Poop 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 Song. Farley says, I make more money off of Amazon Music than any other streaming service because he's <laughs> using all of them. And I'm pretty sure my kid, I have a five-year-old, uh, contributed to that because yeah. that is exactly what the kids yell Anytime they want to hear something. So I can attest to this personally. I just had, as a childless person, I had no idea how how much kids just were like, poop, oh my stupid God. poop. Oh my God. Poop butt. Everything. Yeah. Everything. They say everything. So my nieces create a song that goes poop, 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 poop. So either they should record it and submit it to Amazon Music immediately or they should sue Farley for exactly for prior copyright. art, right, right? Right, right? Yeah, IP. This is my intellectual property. Literally IP. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly IP. <laughs> uh, no, this is genius, and and one of those great laws of unintended consequences, uh, where. I, I love the story of Helpish that you told, Sarah, where he's like, "Yeah, I knew kids like this. I get kids. I had the kids help me write it." Uh, I and and if you read that BuzzFeed article, he didn't even look until they were like kind of hitting hard times. And he's like, well, let's just see if it ever like brought me any money. And that's when he found a few hundred dollars in there right. uh, and then yeah. it took off. So, yeah. I mean, it is, this is SEO, uh, you know, at its finest, right? Just, you know, yep. what, what do the kids want to yell into the, into, in, into the universe? We'll have a song that will play that song and I will make money from it. Yep, that's a message to anybody out there. Start that business because there are people out there making money off of poopy stupid butt. So <laughs> don't let your head go get in your head about that business idea. Just do it. Just you listen know, yeah, to right, the children. Exactly. Think outside the box. There's something for everybody here. Do it for the children. Uh, somebody who's probably heard his children say poopy stupid butt more than once in his life is Len Peralta, who has been <laughs> illustrating today's show. Len? Poop, poop, poopity boop, poop, poop, poop. No, actually, um, you know, when you start talking about uh, AI in mid-journey, I get a little bit nervous, right? Uh, I'm not totally nervous that things are going to, you know, that it's going to replace artists. But I actually like this idea of coming up with prompts. I like that that prompt. And so this piece of art, it's a really, really tough one to explain wow. if you're not watching. <laughs> but it is a this is a prompt. Uh, I didn't do this is it's I'll, I'll read the most it's of it. Very detailed. It's, yeah. Yes. It's wax figures of Al Roker and Eddie Munster standing in the corner amused by an upset child and a bear in the big blue house costume that has been tattooed on the foot of someone whose big toenail was injured by having a basketball thrown at it during golden hour done in the style. Oh, you got Len that Peralta golden hour. For, That's a key phrase. Good golden hour. <laughs> It's Yikes. done in the style of Len Peralta for DTNS. Yes, there's also now. Did you actually <laughs> run this through, Dolly? No, I didn't. <laughs> I just that's oh, the next you step. know the answer already. <laughs> yeah, is, I know. This I... is not a Dolly creation. <laughs> I that's the Len next Peralta. step, though. That we is the next see. step. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it's you know, if, for those of you not watching the uh, the video feed, you got to go check it out because uh, this is the next phase, and this is why. It will never take away. The artists will never disappear. <laughs> well, is trying right. to defend his job. <laughs> I'm trying to defend this because I created this stupid thing based on uh, based on some photos I had in my photo album. A computer can never match you. Please no. send us the AI attempts to mimic Len. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. I want to see how, want, please, how much they do. pale in comparison. We're not kidding. Comparison. <laughs> we yes. want to see it. Not kidding It'd be at great. All. I'd love to see it, please. Uh, yes, you can actually get this right now if you're a, a, a Patreon subscriber, patreon.com forward slash Len. It's right there for you for the taking, right? Um, and, uh, and of course you can also get this at my online store, lenperaltastore.com, which I'm also taking commissions. So hit me up, hit me up. And I might do a dal Dolly mid journey type thing, something like this for you as a gift or something. Who knows? Who knows? Well, Len, good stuff as always. Also good stuff from Terrence Gaines. Terrence, we got a big week coming up next week, but in the yeah. meantime, where can people keep up with your work? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can find me online at brothertech.com. That's B-R-O-T-H-A-T-E-C-H. -E that's where I do all of my Apple support stuff. 
In addition to that, I have two uh, tech podcasts. Uh, myself and my co-host, Nika Montfort, will be on DTNS next week talking about all things Apple Far Out event. But after that, you can find us in our more extensive rundown on the snobwestcast.com. That's where we publish all of our weekly uh, shows. And then in addition to that, myself, Tom, du uh, Tom Dunwood, <laughs> Rob Dunwood, <laughs> and Stephanie Humphrey, we have a tech podcast from a different diverse perspective on the tech john that's t-e-c-h-j-a-w-n.com all good stuff we thank you for being with us today we also thank our brand new boss could be lost that's their name could be lost just started backing us on patreon thank you could be lost you are our winner guess what you're not you could be but you're not you found your home you're right not here. lost here welcome <laughs> you are seen <laughs> patrons stick around for our extended show good day internet we affectionately call it gdi uh you can also catch this show dtns which is live monday through friday at 4 p.m eastern 20 hundred utc if you can join us live we'd love to have you it's lots of fun you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live we are out monday because it's labor day in the u.s but we'll be back tuesday with aya zaktar joining us have a great weekend This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and host Rich Straffolino. Video producer and Twitch producer Joe Kuntz. Technical producer Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer Dan Campos. News host, writer, and producer Jen Cutter. Science correspondent Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator Zoe Detterding. Our mods! Beatmaster, WS Goddess One, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Gautarama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Stevens, a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Video feed by Sean Way. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A., Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Dylan Harari. Contributors for this week's show included Allison Sheridan, Justin Robert Young, and Terrence Gaines. Our guests this week were Rob DeMillo and Will Harris, and thanks to all our patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>